side. So that means many people they have their maybe they learn from UK or they just think okay this is good for them. So they they have been practice. Yeah. So so practice is I think as over uh, seventy percent market is practice over seventy percent market. Yeah, for practice. And but of course for now in you already in Taiwan, so you need to try oolong tea. I'm not sure if you try it already or not. Because oolong tea is from uh, the most famous oolong tea is from uh, my hometown Alisan in that area. Uh, the attitude is uh, from 1,000 1, to 2,000 meters. The, that area they have the best oolong tea. Yeah. So if you never try, you can maybe you can having some try to so oolong tea when you go to the restaurant or a tea house or yeah oolong tea. Okay, yeah, try oolong tea. And uh, because the tea, I think the tea culture in Taiwan oh, is very. We have many, many, many unique way. Everybody have their own way to drink tea. Yeah, to having tea. So, so especially the oolong tea. You can see oolong tea. The uh, normal oolong tea is a uh, is a, just a, like a circle. Yeah, and the black tea. No, black tea is just like a, a a line. Yeah, if you if you buy the black tea, you open it. The black tea is normally a line, but oolong tea is. They, they, they just combine it in a circle, yeah, circle outside. Yeah, that is a very, very, very different style for them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll let you get a rest about five minutes. Yeah. If some of you are falling asleep. <laughs> it's okay, but if you have, have any question, please just direct talk, talk to me, okay? Like, 
I find it like maybe sometimes to show like someone, you know, like, stuff. So I'm rec like sometimes recording like the route for an X moment of time. I just put where I start, where I end, you know, locations. I just put random music over. Usually, I mean, <coughs> there are some YouTube channels that do that, like for make more you know, repetitively. This special is one of ones. If there is like one YouTube channel that like posts like stuff from China, the China like records road, like trips such as like Beijing to night hunting and records everything. Yeah, I put over like mini map and such. Yeah, just records it. He puts it on like or like natural speed or like times two or times three sometimes. Yeah, like to get you like a feeling of how it is kind of how the how do people enjoy just here like people I feel like they don't usually know on which lane they should be. Like our bus was like slowed down a few times by some drivers that were like very slowly driving in the middle lane. And they also like pass on your bus. Are you allowed to like pass someone from the right? I, I don't know how to low here. No, I mean in Poland. No, 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 unless the road has like three lanes, it's not so like... Okay, because like in Austria and Germany, mm -hmm. you should pass people. On, on the left, yeah. But I mean like on the right is kind of... Yeah. Yeah. Unless there are like three lanes, you should do that. Yeah. Like you can do this usually. It's like... I mean, but which is kind of like a show of disrespect towards the person who is driving on the left. Yeah. Yeah. Even though he could like hide on the right. You get like our law states kind of like in true pollution. driving the right, like the most right lane possible. So like you can get a fine for driving all the time on the left. Yeah. But like, that's very rare to find. So you really have to do it like in front of a police car for a long time <laughs> to get this fine because it's really hard to get. But we usually just tend to like flash high views to the people who are on the wrong line. You know, like big, 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 big you know, like flashing the person so he gets out of the way. Yeah. But that's at least in, in Germany they do that a lot. Hmm? In Germany they like flash. Yeah. But in Austria usually you have like a speed limit. So yeah. yeah. People don't really pass by that fast. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like you have to like, remember where the photobooths uh, are and where the police can stand. Okay, and then you can just speed a little. Mm -hmm. Like in Austria, like a friend of mine was like in the middle of night. Yeah. Oh. So no cars in the road. And she like literally just <coughs> drove in the middle because it was easier. Yeah. And then she got a fine for not driving on the okay, right yeah. side. Okay. And that's understandable because she was driving like 140 on highway. And now she was literally driving. Like and you know, like like on the middle of like empty highway, they yeah. just gave her ticket for like uh, speeding yeah, 10, 10 kilometers or more. Oh no. no. I mean, I thought it, that was gonna be the story, no. but. Literally just driving in the middle. Yeah. Okay, look, all the buses on the left lane. Like, why do they, do they not even try? You know, the Hyundai is being kind of slowed down. No? Because the buses are like, where? For, I think they are passing. Them. Yeah, yeah, but they were like passing with such a big margin and they could wait. Yeah. Let this guy and then get out on the, to the left one. Like it's missing, it's kind of more like American style here. 
there is no like no signs that show the distance to the city. Like, yeah, that's so yeah. I yeah, love like, these signs so yeah. much. Yeah. I, I feel yeah. I mean, like most of the like, people who are interested in that know where the like the biggest in America Poland is, which is kind of intense sport. Because it shows Budapest for some unknown reason. <laughs> Since from the communist times, you know. And it shows 970 something kilometers. I've and seen but 890 yeah. something. But usually, like, typical, like, if it's, if it's something above 300 kilometers, it's a little bit like a big thing. I don't know. Yeah, but we like put them everywhere, actually. Like, out, I, like if you like drive out of a small city, you. 100% see the same thing. Yeah, that seems no, I don't know. On the highways, after every single like exit, there is another thing that shows you how far you, uh, how far like the route is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Here, there's literally yeah. nothing. The same in Austria. Yeah. But for me, numbers don't mean anything anymore. Like I had to once. I helped my brother move yeah. from Berlin to Zurich. Oh, that's and a short route. Yeah, but I, I came from Vienna. Yeah, lovely. And I had work the next day. No problem. So I <laughs> I drove from Vienna to yeah. Berlin like eight hours or something. And then from Berlin to Zurich like 12 hours. Yeah. And then from Zurich to Vienna back 12 hours. Yeah. Not, I mean, in total it was like 24 hours. It didn't add up. I mean, but I, it was just like for me, it would be like a little small little trip. <laughs> I would love to do trips like this. Yeah. Except I would get some a lot of probably speeding tickets on the way. Yeah, yeah, because I, I know, I, like I you know how much can I like exceed the speed limit safely. Like usually, and I mean I love, I hate those German kind of like works on the roads because they like put 80 and then put a photo booth and like, hit them somewhere yeah. on the like what construction site and you have to be very careful to get the ticket yeah it was like just crazy because it's just like 800 kilometers yeah. and like it takes so long to go down to 700 six whatever ages and then like you're there and then again 500 kilometers yeah man at least wait but you know to like go again is kind of like probably very nice trip for the mountains unless yeah, you're going to manage and then you turn back to us the thing is like i took the autobahn because i yeah. i wasted enough time okay. i didn't want to take the long road yeah understand that. But that's so weird, you have to like, you know, pay for the highways, like, fighting. You don't have to in Austria. You don't have to. I think in Italy you have to. Oh, okay. In yeah, Germany I also don't think. Oh, yeah, no, you go. have to pay for, um, like, once a year. Yeah. But you don't have to pay, like, for one trip. Yeah, yeah. We don't you have to pay, like, yeah, once a year? Yeah, okay. We are yeah, people still have the old system kind of thing. because some highways are private, private owned, not country owned. Uh, oh. So they have their own kind of like station A taking your money, station oh, B taking your money. I hate that. And we are planning to like buy them out from these private companies, but we, the contract has to kind of like fade away first. So we, yeah, that was a big mistake of one government to allow for this. So, but so now we are all build them state by state kind of. And uh, like they to gain votes for the elections this year, they like announced uh, like in June the, the government-owned highways will be free for everyone. Really? And since first of July, like they are open you know, like, all the time. Wait, so you don't even have to pay no. once a year? No, no, not so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean only the private-owned highways, like from. Uh, like on the way from Wush to Poznan, if you know how the map, map looks like, like from the middle to the west, towards Berlin. But how do you want to like mm -hmm. keep the highway? Uh, I mean, we usually like take the money from the fuel, like tanking, like oh taxes. Yeah, taxes from like petrol stations or like like just like the rational roads, like expressways, etc. 
like like usual, usually like okay. a lot of water on some uh, place. It's about 10 minutes. Yeah, we will reach the Haka village farm. So I just uh, simply introduce the Haka village farm. Okay, if you need sleep, you just continue sleep. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, but if you awake, just listen to me. Okay, uh, the name is Haka village farm or the Haka village leisure farm. Of course, according to the world, we can know uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a traditional farm, but uh, the activities are for Hakka activities. What what is Hakka activities? Uh, because I already said Hakka is the second largest tribe in Taiwan, right? So uh, they have their own culture. Uh, for now, uh, I'm very interesting in their uh, Chinese. We say lei cha. Lei cha cha means tea in Taiwan. So I already talked about we have green tea, oolong tea, black tea, right? But Hakka, their Lei Cha, is very, very special style. Uh, they put the tea into a boat, and also they put many nuts or scissors, seeds, many, yeah, many things inside, and together they pound the tea, punch the tea, yeah. And then they put some hot water and drink it. So it full of many style, full of many. Yeah, you can taste the many things. Unlike the tradition, uh, unlike traditional tea, because uh, normally if you try to taste the oolong tea in Taiwan, most the people they want the pure oolong tea, nothing else, only oolong tea and the water, nothing else. They want to taste the the pure oolong tea feeling, but they cha. No, they put many things inside, so you can taste many things. Yeah, that is very special. Yeah, today you you uh, if you will you will try this, and also you have a, a clam coil. I'm not sure the clam coil is correct meaning or not. In Taiwan, uh, we say it's kong kong coil. It's Taiwanese or or kong yo. Uh, okay. Uh, the activity is um. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, Taiwan, we uh, it, for example, from, from my from my home, uh, outside we have many farm, and if the farm they finish, they cut the the the, the cut the grow, and uh, normally they will have a rest about one month, doing nothing for the farm. Then we have we children we just play in the farm. So we just burn some fire and put some potato or chicken or blah 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 in um, 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 over there in the farm. Yeah. And put maybe about one or two hours and everything get done, then we just taste it. Yeah. So we can we can try. Yeah. But I'm not sure it's because somebody say it's an earth oven and somebody says clam coil. I'm not sure the correct word because the, the I think the activity is only in Taiwan. So maybe if we transfer to English, there is no correct word. But you can see you can say it's a clam coil or um, yeah a oven or yeah. But, 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 but you will know you will know uh, after ten minutes. So no don't worry okay. And we also uh, they have uh, uh, they can uh, looking for snails. Yeah, I think yeah you can not snake snail, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm afraid in Belgium you have many or or in Europe you have many snakes, snake or no? Some. I think yeah. snake maybe only in the we have a mountain area and snake then yeah can can going everywhere right? But if in the cities I think the snake is very afraid of people. When I say people, well, there's a huge things. They, I think snake is very scared, right? Yeah. But Taiwan, because we have mountains, so in my hometown, I can see snakes every day. But normally, there, there's a there's a unpoison. It's a, just a very cute. Uh, the small one, very cute, because that's that, and he's just uh, okay crossing the road. Yeah, because uh, my hometown, uh, very few cars passing by yeah because only our small village people I think 
uh, we have about uh, 30 house there only only 30 house very few people yeah because the young people they move to the big cities yeah and I moved back to village I stayed in Taipei for 10 years yeah and in Germany for uh, two years yeah Indonesia uh, because uh, before I joined the, the tour guide job I am a electronic engineer yeah, I like. I work for an electronic company, so I, my boss just sent me out to everywhere. That's why I love. So I transferred to. Yeah, I went to say, hey, why choose a job? You can travel around the world. So I, I just. But when I entered this in two zero nineteen, and only one year, then the COVID nineteen comes. So I have many holidays <laughs> again. I really enjoy for the holiday because in the electronic company, 24 hours working every day. Because, okay, in Taiwan, of course, I'm working 9 to 5, no problem. But my customer is in US and in Europe. I need to answer the phone. And in their working time, I'm sleeping. But I cannot sleep, I need to answer the phone. So for elect electronic company, normally I cannot turn off my cell phone. So I need to work, you can say, 24 hours a day working. But of course, not every day we'll have a, a, self, uh, a phone call. But I just worry, you know. So my mind, oh, I'm still working, I'm still, and I cannot sleep very well. So, so when I have these holidays, the COVID-19, I have this holiday. I'm so, so, so happy, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so okay, this area is in, we are already in Mainong area. That's where you can see many farms and many uh, things here. Okay, let me see if we have any special buildings here. Uh, because we have very traditional buildings, but I'm not sure in this row we do have or not. Okay, I'll let you know if we see a very traditional house here. Yep. No, not yet. And this season, we don't have too much flowers in this season. Normally, in uh, after the rice grow, I think uh, before winter, they will have some flowers to make sure the the farm will be will be rich. It will be uh, the, the 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 soil will be will be rich. They put some flowers. Yeah, but but not not here, not this season. Yeah. Okay. So we are yeah, we are here in Mainong Hakka Village Farm. It was just raining five minutes ago. <laughs> but not now. Good. Good news for us. 